everything that you go through. He's including all of that. When he says that, who shall separate us from the love of God? None of these things he mentioned. And then he says, even through this, as God is for you, and you have the victory, and yet you're counted as sheep, killed all the day long, that doesn't sound like the false gospel of the word faith movement. That sounds like the total opposite. That doesn't say that because you're a child of the king, you're an heir to the throne, and therefore you have access and by the word of your mouth, by the very word, spoken word, by faith, you can then create your own reality and you can have perfect health and be wealthy, etc., etc. That's not what this is saying. This is saying that even in your poverty, even in your physical ailments, even in the mental depression, even when you can't sleep. Angel says, Amen. <laughs> Through all these things, we can rest assured that nothing can separate us from the love of God. He goes on. Uh, read uh, verses 38 and 39, Mike. Start with verse 37. I'm sorry. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at the second word in verse 37. The second word in verse 37 says, in all these things. In the tribulation, in the distress, in the persecution, in the famine, in the nakedness, hope that never happens, in the peril, <laughs> amen. I thought I'd get an amen out of everybody when I said that. I think you all are just too nice. <laughs> in the sword. See, there's where I have to tell all the pre-tribulation people out there. I believe we're going to be raptured before God pours out His wrath on us. I do not believe there's any guarantee that the spoiled brat Christians in the United States of America will not suffer horrible persecution at the hands of man before the rapture. See, we're falsely accused of, by people of believing we're never going to suffer. No, I just know God's not going to pour out His wrath on me and that's what the purpose of the Great Tribulation is. And that's what's happening to those ladies in Iran. That's what's happening to those folks in Pakistan. That's what's happening to the fellow and many other people in China. That's what's happening to folks in uh, North Korea. That's what's happening in the Sudan. That's what's happening in Venezuela. That's what's happening all over the place, including Canada, where preachers are threatened if they speak out against homosexuality. Let me make it clear. Homosexuality is a sin. And if you are not born again and repent of your sin of homosexuality, you will go to hell. That's the truth. It's also true that if you're a thief, or if you're a liar, or if you're just an everyday average guy who just won't repent, you'll go to the same hell as the homosexuals. There's nothing hateful about what we're preaching. We're an equal opportunity offender. That's right. We just believe in preaching it straight to everybody. What's your sin? Name your sin and I'll preach against it. Well, let me hear your sin. Yeah, it's not, I'm not preaching Greg Miller's book. I didn't write this. I'm preaching God's book. If the Canadian NDSC comes across the border and the hate crime laws get passed and I get jailed for speaking out against homosexuality, I hope and trust that my wife will bake me a cake and bring me something to eat and the rest of you write me letters. Because that's where I'm going. <laughs> no. No, no nail files. No bombs. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, I'm going to be real with you. I tell you, if I get thrown in prison, the only thing that will keep me from falling apart is this book. I am motivated to study. I am motivated to hide His Word in my heart because I look to the day that I'm going to get thrown behind bars. I truly do. And I want to know this so that if they take this book away from me, I have His Word hidden in my heart. And if they're going to throw me into solitary confinement, it's going to be for preaching to the concrete walls. And believe me, I know, I know that that's what's going to happen. If they throw me in, in jail, I'll be preaching to I'll be preaching through the cells, and they have to put me in solitary to keep me from preaching if they don't want me to. 
I had a job where I was working with a bunch of unsaved people. My boss was a believer that I'd uh, preached the gospel to. He got saved and baptized. And then I said, hey, so, you know, you're one of my uh, church members and everything. I need a job. <laughs> and Because uh, our, our church was real small at that time. So I went to work for him. He didn't tell me how bad the characters were that I'd be working with. But while I was working with them, they were playing this satanic music. And one of the songs was Alice in Chains, I think it's called. A group called Alice in Chains. And... Uh, where the guy blasphemes Jesus Christ right in the song. And uh, I just got fed up, man. I, I mean, I was praying. I was witnessing the guy trying to be nice. I just got fed up. So uh, I went over and I told Bo. I said, Bo, I, I shouldn't have to listen to that. I said, it's one thing for them to listen to bad music, but that is blasphemous garbage. And he said, well, that's my radio. He says, if you don't like it, put your foot through it. He, I don't know whether he's joking or not, but I went back to work and I told the guys, I said, now I'm going to give you a chance to listen to something that is respectful, at least to my beliefs as a Christian. Otherwise, I'll destroy the radio. And so I went off and they kept doing it and they kept uh, playing it. So I walked over and I took my boot and I went boom right through that radio and it blew a gasket and never played again. Well, that made him mad. He went out and bashed in my headlight. What? So, Radio? yeah. So I, I didn't say a word about it, and uh, you know, I just sat in there. And then, so as we worked, I just mind my own business. Well, then he pulled his car up, and he cranked up his radio. Well, he still couldn't pull the car into the house we were working in, so it wasn't real loud. So while he did that, I began to quote every Bible verse I knew. <laughs> And I simply, at the top of my lungs, you know, began to, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good work. And I just kept going on and on. I did I'm working, and I kept going on and on. Finally, after about 20 minutes of that, and, you know, you, you, you get pressed against that, you'll find out how many verses you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, after about 20 minutes that, he walks out, turns it off. <laughs> so I went silent. And we never had a problem again. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you know, the Word of God is powerful. And so memorize it. Put it in your heart. Understand it. And you'll be surprised at how many situations you get in where the spoken Word of God will destroy the wall that someone has between the two of you. I've been told over and over, one of the reasons why people can't witness with any power is because they don't even use the Word of God. Oh, Jesus is wonderful. He saved me from my love. And that during the whole time, they don't even quote the Word of God. And what's even better is if you're sitting down one-to-one, -one, open your Bible and turn. You want to use the Romans road? Turn to Romans chapter 6, verse 23 and say, now will you read this? Well, you know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But you realize something. Read this, Romans 5.8. God commendeth His love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you understand that even though you're a sinner, Christ loved you enough to die for you? Turn to John 3.16, let them read it. Turn over, once they, they look like they understand and they're ready, you can turn, around, turn over to Romans 10.9 and 10 through uh, th uh, 9-13, let them read it. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find the latest video messages posted on the front page and links to free downloads of our messages in MP3 format. That's kjvbiblebelievers.com This program is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship. Thank you for listening.